Hi, I'm Peter Burris. Welcome to Action Item. There's an enormous net new array of software technologies that are available to businesses and enterprises to attend to some new classes of problems. And that means that there's an explosion in the number of problems that people perceive as could be applied or could be solved with software approaches. The whole world of how we're going to automate things differently and in artificial intelligence and any number of other software technologies are all being brought to bear on problems in ways that we never envisioned or never thought possible. That leads ultimately to a comparable explosion in the number of approaches to how we're going to solve some of these problems. That means new tooling, new models, new any number of other structures, conventions, and artifacts that are going to have to be factored by IT organizations and professionals in the technology industry as they conceive and put forward plans and approaches to solving some of these problems. Now, George, that leads to a question. Uh, are we going to see an ongoing, ever-expanding array of approaches, or are we going to see some new kind of steady state that kind of starts to uh, simplify what happens or how people, how enterprises conceive of the role of software in solving problems? Well, we've had uh, probably four decades of package applications uh, being installed um, and defining really uh, the systems of record, which first handled the ordered cash process and then layered around that, um, once we had more CRM capabilities, we had the sort of the opportunity to lead capability added in there. But systems of record fundamentally are backward looking. They're tracking, you know, about the performance of the business. The opportunity recording we Recording what has happened. Yes, recording what has happened. Um, the opportunity we have is now to combine um, what the big internet companies pioneered with systems of engagement, where you had machine learning anticipating and influencing interactions. You can now combine those sorts of analytics with systems of record to inform and automate uh, decisions in the form of transactions. And the question is now, how are we going to do this? Is there some way to um, simplify or not completely standardize, but can we make it uh, so that we have um, at least some conventions and, and design patterns for how to do that. And David, we've been working on this problem for quite some time, but the notion of convergence has been extent in the hardware, in the services, or in the systems business for quite some time. Take us through what convergence means and how it is going to set up new ways of thinking about software. So uh, there's a <coughs> hardware convergence, and it's useful to define a few terms. There's converged systems. Uh, those are systems which have some management software that have been brought into it. And then on top of that, they uh, have traditional uh, SANs and networks. There's hyperconverged systems, which started off in the cloud, uh, systems and now have come to uh, enterprise as well. And those bring software networking, software storage, software. Software defined, so defined. it's a virtualizing of those converged systems. Absolutely. Uh, and in the future, is going to bring uh, also uh, automated uh, operational uh, stuff as well, AI in the operational side. Um, and then there's full stack uh, convergence, where we start to put in the software the application software to begin with, the database side of things, and then the uh, application itself uh, on top of the database. And finally, these what you were talking about, the systems of intelligence, where we can combine both the systems of record, the systems of engagement, and the uh, real-time analytics as a complete stack. But That's let's talk, about, let's talk yeah. about this for a second, because ultimately what I think you're saying is that we've got hardware convergence in the form right. of converged infrastructure, hyper-converged in the forms of virtualization mm. of that, new ways of thinking about how the stack comes together, and new ways of thinking about application components. But what seems to be the common thread through all of this is data. 
Yes. So is, is, it, is basically what we're seeing is a convergence or a rethinking of how software elements revolve around the data? Is that kind of the centerpiece of this? That's the centerpiece of it. And um, we had very serious constraints about accessing data. Um, those were improved with Flash, uh, but there's still a, a lot of room for improvement. And the architecture that we are saying is going to come forward, which really helps this a lot, is the Unigrid architecture, where we offload the networking and the storage from the processor. This is already happening in the, in the hyperscale uh, clouds. They're putting a lot of effort into doing this. Um, we're, we're at the same time allowing any processor to access any data in a much more fluid way, and we can grow that to to thousands of processes. Now that type of architecture gives us the ability to converge the traditional systems of record, and there are a lot of them obviously, and the systems of engagement and the, the real-time analytics for the first time. But the focal point of that convergence is not the licensing of the software, mm -hmm. the focal point is convergence around the data. The data. Now the that data has some, itself. But yeah. that has some pretty significant implications when we think about how software has always been sold, how mm -hmm. organizations to run software have been structured, uh, the, way that f uh, the way that funding is set up within businesses. So George, how does it, what does it mean to talk about converging software around data? from a practical standpoint over the next few years. Okay, so let me, let me take that and interpret that as um, converging the software around data in the context of adding intelligence to our, our existing application portfolio and then the new applications that follow on. Um, and basically, um, w when we want to inject an intelligence enough to inform or in anticipate and inform interactions or or um, uh, inform or automate transactions. We have a bunch of steps that need to get done where we're ingesting essentially contextual or ambient information. Often this is uh, information ab about a user or in a, uh, the business process. And this data, there's, it's got to go through a pipeline where there's both a, a design time and a runtime. And, in addition to ingesting it, you have to sort of enrich it and make it ready for analysis. Then the analysis is essentially picking out of all that data and calculating the features that you plug into a machine learning model. And then that, that produces uh, essentially an inference based on all that data that says, well, this is the, this is the probable uh, value. And it sounds like, uh, Sounds like it's in the weeds, but the point is it's actually a standardized set of steps. Then the question is, do you put that all together in one product across that whole pipeline? Can one piece of infrastructure software uh, manage that? Or do you have a bunch of pieces each handing off to the next? And but, but let me stop you, because so, uh, yeah. I want to I make sure that we kind of follow this thread. So we've, we've argued that hardware convergence and the ability to scale uh, the role that data plays or how data is used is uh, happening and yep. that opens up new opportunities to think about data. Now what we've got is we are centering a lot of the software convergence around the use of data uh, through copies and other types of mechanisms for handling you know, snapshots and whatnot in things like Unigrid. What you're, what you're, but let's start with this. It sounds like what you're saying is, we need to think of new classes of investments in technologies that are specifically set up to handling the processing of data in a more distributed, ap distributed application way, right? If I got that right, that's what, kind of what we mean by pipelines. Yes. Okay, so once we do that, once we establish those conventions, once we establish organizationally, institutionally, how that's going to work, now we take the next step of saying, are we going to default to a single set of products, or are we going to do best of breed, and what kind of convergence are we going to see there? Uh, and what, there's no... I, but first of all, have you got that right? Yes, but there's no right answer. And I think there's a bunch of variables that we have to play with that depend on who the customer is. For instance, um, the very largest and most sophisticated tech companies are more comfortable taking multiple pieces, each that's very specialized, and putting them together in a pipeline. Facebook, um, 
Yahoo, LinkedIn, Google, got it. Those guys, and and the 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 knobs that they're playing with, that everyone's playing with, are three basically on the software side. There's your latency budget, which is how much time do you have to pro to produce an answer, um, so that that drives the transaction or the interaction, and it's not that itself is not just a single answer because um, you just it's not. It's, the goal isn't to get it as short as possible. The goal is to get as much information into the analysis within the budgeted latency. So it's packing the bud the latency budget with data. Yes, because mm -hmm. the more the more data that goes into making the inference, the better the inference. Got it. The the, the example that uh, some someone used actually on Fried Zakaria GPS one, one uh, show about it was, if he had 300 attributes uh, describing a person, he, would, he could know more about that person than that person did <laughs> um, in terms of inferring other attributes. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the point is, once you've gotten your latency budget, the other th the two knobs that you can play with are development complexity and admin complexity. And the idea is, on development complexity, there's uh, a, a bunch of uh, abstractions that you have to deal with. Um, if it's all one product, you're going to have one data model, one address uh, and namespace convention, one programming model, one way of persisting data, a whole bunch of things. That's simplicity. Um, and ma that makes it more accessible to mainstream organizations. S similarly, okay. there's a bunch of, let me, let, let me just um, add that there's, there's probably two or three times as many constructs that admins would have to deal with. So again, if you're dealing with one product, it's a huge burden off the admin, and we know they struggled with Hadoop. So convergence, decisions about how to enact convergence is going to be partly or strongly influenced by those three issues. Uh, latency. The latency budget, uh, administrative comp com uh, development complexity or simplicity, and administrative So, I, David. I, I'd like to add one more to that, and that is location of data. Uh, because you want to, uh, you want to be able to look at the data that is most relevant to solving that particular problem. Now, today, a lot of the data is inside the enterprise. There's a lot of data outside that, but there's still, you will want to, in, in the best possible way, combine that data one way But isn't way that a another. variable on the latency budget? Well, it, it, there's, there's the, I would think it's very useful to split the latency budget, which is to do with inference, mainly, and development. Uh, with the machine learning. So there is a development cycle with machine learning. That is much longer. That is uh, days, could be weeks, could be months. Well, it's still done in uh, batch. It, it, right, it is, or it will be done. Wait, wait a second. Uh, it will be done in batch. It is in, done in batch. And, and it's, you, you need to test it and then deliver it as an inference engine uh, to, the, the, to, to the applications th uh, that you're talking about. Now that's going to be very close together. That inference and the rest of it has to be all physically very close together. But the data itself is spread out. And, and, and you want to have mechanisms that can combine those data, move application to those data, bring those together in the best possible way. That is a, still a batch process. That can run where the data is, in the cloud, locally, wherever it is. And I think you brought up a great point, which I, I would tend to include in latency budget because in, in, in no matter what um, kind of answers you're looking for, some of the attributes are going to be pre-computed, and those could be uh, yes. external data. Yes. And, and you're not going to calculate everything in real time. There's just, it's, you it's, can't. Yes, no, you have a you, you, you have a budget. You can. <laughs> but but is the is the is the is the practical reality that the convergence of so so again the argument we've got all these new problems, all new kinds of new people that are claiming that they know how to solve the problems, each of them choosing different classes of tools to solve the problem, an explosion across the board in the approaches, which can lead to enormous 
downstream integration and complexity Issues. costs. You've used yes. the example of, of Cloudera, uh, for example, some of the distro companies who claim that 50 plus percent of their development budget is dedicated to just integrating these pieces. That's a non-starter for a lot of enterprises. Right. Are we fundamentally saying that the degree of complexity, or the degree of simplicity and convergence that's possible in software is tied to the degree okay. of convergence in the data? Yeah. Um, this is you 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 you're honing in on something really important. G give me give me one Thank more. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 let, let, <laughs> give an example of the convergence of data that you're talking about or, or let, I'll let, let David let, do it because I think he's going to jump on. Yes. So l let me take examples for example. Uh, if you have a small business, there's no way that you want to invest yourself in any of the normal levels of uh, machine learning and applications like that, you want to outsource that. Uh, so big software companies are going to do that for you. Uh, and, and they're going to do it especially for the uh, specific business processes which are unique to them, which give them digital differentiation of some sort or another. So for, for all of those type of things, you will, software will come in from vendors, from SAP or son of SAP, which will help you solve those problems. And uh, having uh, data brokers, which are collecting the data, putting them together, helping you with that, that seems to me the way things are going. In the same way that there's a lot of inference engines, which will be out at the IoT level, those will have very rapid uh, anal uh, analytics given to them, again, not by yourself, but by companies that specialize in facial recognition or specialize in making uh, uh, warehouse, data wait, warehouses. Wait a minute, are you saying that my customers aren't special that require special facial recognition? <laughs> so so I, I agree with you, David, but, but I want to come back to this notion so because- the, the, the point I was getting at is, there's going to be lots and lots of room for software to be developed to help in specific cases. And large markets to sell that Very software into. Markets, yes. uh, uh, whether it's a software, but increasingly also with services. But yep. I want to come back to this notion of convergence, because we've talked about hardware convergence, and we're starting to talk about the practical limits on software convergence. But somewhere in between, I would argue, and I think you guys would agree, that really the catalyst for, or the thing that's going to determine the rate of change and the degree of convergence is going to be how we deal with data. Now you've done a lot of research yeah. on this, and I'm going, to, I'm going to put something out there and you tell me if I'm wrong. That at the end of the day, when we start thinking about Unigrid, when we start thinking about some of these new technologies, and the ability to have single copies, or s single mm -hmm. sources of data, yeah. multiple copies, in many respects what we're talking about is the virtualization of data without loss. Yes. Without loss of the characters, the fidelity of the data, or the state of the data. Yeah. Or oh, I got that right? The, knowing the state of the data. Or knowing the state if of the data. If you take a snapshot, that's, that's a point in time. You know what that point of time is. Uh, and you can do a lot of analytics, for example, on, and you want to do them on a, a certain time of day or whatever it is so when is you're it, comparing. So is it wrong to say that we're seeing, you know, we've moved through the virtualization of hardware and yeah. we're now in a hyperscale, which yeah. is, or hyper-converged, which mm. is very powerful stuff. We're seeing this explosion in the amount of software that's yeah. being, uh, you know, the way we approach problems and whatnot, but that a forcing function, a, a something that's going to both constrain how converged that can be, but also force or catalyze some convergence, is the idea that we're moving into an era where we can start to think about virtualized data yeah. through some of these distributed file and, systems and, and, and the, other types that's of That's right, and the metadata that the, goes with it. The, the most important thing about the data is, and, and is increasing much more rapidly than data itself, is the metadata around it. And but but I, I, I want to just uh, make one point on this. All data isn't useful. Uh, there's a huge amount of data that we capture that we're just going to have to throw away. It's the idea that we can look at every piece of data for every decision is, is patently false. Uh, there's a lovely example of this in, in um, uh, uh, fluid uh, uh, mechanics. Fluid dynamics. Flu fluid dynamics. If you're, trying to, if you're trying to have simulation at a very, very low level, you, the amount of high data, fidelity. High, high fidelity, you, you run out of capacity right. very, very, very quickly indeed. So you have to make trade-offs about everything 
and all of that data that you're doing in that simulation, you're not going to keep that, all the data of, from IoT. You can't keep that. And, and that's, not just a, that's not just a statement about the performance or the power or the capabilities of the hardware. There's some physical realities Absolutely. that are just going to yes. be, that are going to yeah. limit what yeah. you can do with a simulation. Yes. But, but uh, and, and, and we've, talk, we've talked about this in other action items. There are, there is this notion of options on data value, where you hmm. do that uh, today's, the value of today's data is may much be <laughs> the, well, it's, it's higher from a time standpoint for the problems that we understand and are trying to solve now, but there may be future problems where we still want to ensure that Absolutely. we have some degree of data yes. where we can yes. be better at attending those future problems. But I want to come back to this point, because in all honesty, I haven't heard anybody else talking about this, and maybe it's because I'm not listening, but this notion of, some, you know, again, your research, that the notion of virtualized data inside these new architectures yes. being a catalyst for yes. simplification of a lot of the applications sharing. and subsystems. It's, it's, it's essentially sharing of data. Mm -hmm. So instead of having the traditional way of doing it within a data center, which is I have my systems of record, I make a copy, you, it gets delivered to the, to the data warehouse, for example, that's the way that's been done. That is too slow. Moving data is incredibly slow. So the, another way of doing it is to share that data, make a virtual copy of it, and technology is allowing you to do that because the access density has gone up by thousands of times. Because? Because, <laughs> because of flash, because yeah. of uh, new technologies at that level. High performance interfaces, high performance, high performance interfaces, networks. All of, all of that stuff is now allowing things which just couldn't be even conceived. However, there is still a constraint there. It's, it, it may be a thousand times bigger, but there is still an absolute constraint to the amount of data that you can actually and process. And that constraint is provided by? Latency. Latency. Speed yes. of light. Speed of light and the speed of the processes themselves. Uh, yeah, the let me points. add yes. something um, uh, that, that may help um, explain the sort of the virtualization of, of uh, data and how it ties into the convergence um, or, or non-convergence of the software around it, which is um, when we're building these analytic pipelines, essentially we've disassembled what used to be a DBMS. And so out of that we've got a storage engine, we've got query optimizers, we've got data manipulation languages, um, which have grown into full-blown analytic languages, uh, data definition language. Now, the system catalog used to be just a, a way to virtualize all the tables in the database and tell you where all the stuff was and the indexes and things like that. Now, what we're seeing is, since data is now spread out over so many places and products, we're seeing an emergence of a new type of catalog, whether that's from Elation or Dremio, or um, on AWS, it's the uh, Glue catalog, and I think there's something equivalent coming on, on Azure. But the point is, um, we're beginning those are beginning to get useful enough to be the entry point for um, analytic products and maybe eventually even for transactional products to uh, update um, or, or at least to analyze the data in these pipelines that we're putting together out of this, out of these components of what was a disassembled database. Now, we I, could I would be- would make a difference there between the development of analytics and again, the real-time use of those analytics within systems of intelligence. Yeah, but when you're and th using those are them. Those are different uh, problems they have to solve. Well, uh, there's this design time and a runtime. There's actually yes. four pipelines. For the, for the sort of analytic pipeline itself, there's, the, there's design time and runtime. And then for the inference engine yep. and the, the modeling that goes behind it, there's also design time and runtime. But I guess what I'm, I'm not disagreeing that you could have one converged product to manage the runtime analytic pipeline. I'm just saying that the pieces that you assemble could come from one vendor. Yeah, but I think David's point, I think it's accurate, and this has been since the beginning of time. time. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly, certainly predated UNIVAC. Um, that, uh, that at the end of the day, uh, read-write ratios and the characteristics of the data are going to have an enormous impact yeah. on the, the choices that you make. And high write to read ratios almost dictate a degree of convergence, and we used to call that 
SMP <laughs> or you know scale up database managers and for those types of applications or those types of workloads it's not necessarily obvious that that's going to change now we can still find ways to relax that but you're talking about George the new characteristics the injecting the analytics the injecting yes. the analytics yes. where we're, we're doing more reading as opposed to writing we may still be writing into an application that has these characteristics but, but it's a, a small amount of data but a significant yeah. portion of the new function is associated with these new pipelines right yeah. I agree. And, and and it's actually um, your w what data you create is generally derived data, yeah. so you're not stepping on something that's already there. All right, so let me get some action items here. David, why don't I start with you? What's the action item? So uh, for me, about convergence, th there's two levels of convergence. First of all, uh, converge as much as possible and give the work to the vendor. Uh, would be my action item. Uh, the more that you can go full stack, the more that you can get the software uh, services from a single point, a uh, single throat to choke, single hand to shake, the better, the, the more you have outsourced your problems to them. And that has a speed implication. And that has time a to value. Yeah, time to value, it has a, you don't have to do undifferentiated work. Got so it. that's the first level of convergence. And then the second level of convergence is to look hard about how you can bring additional value to your existing systems of record uh, by putting in uh, automation as a, a real-time analytics, which leads to automation. That is the second one where the, for me, where the money is, automation, reduction in the number of things that people have to do. George, action item. So m my action item is that you have to evaluate, you the customer have to evaluate sort of uh, your, your skills as much as your existing application portfolio. And if, if more of your greenfield apps um, can start in the cloud uh, and, and you're not religious about open source, but you're more religious about the admin burden and development burden and your latency budget, then start focusing on the services that the cloud vendors originally created that were standalone, but they are increasingly integrating because their customers are leading them there. Um, and then for those customers who you know, have decades and decades of infrastructure and applications on-prem and need a pathway to the cloud, some of the vendors, formerly known as Hadoop vendors, but for that matter, any on-prem software vendor is providing customers a way to run workloads in a hybrid environment or to migrate data across platforms. All right, so let me give this a final action item here. Uh, thank you, David Floyer, George Gilbert, uh, uh, Neil Radin, and Jim Kabilis, and the rest of the Wikibon team is with customers today. We talked today about convergence at the software level. What we've observed over the course of the last few years is an expanding array of software technologies, specifically AI, big data, machine learning, et cetera, that are allowing enterprises to think differently about the types of problems that they can solve with technology. That's leading to an explosion in the number of problems that folks are looking at, the number of individuals participating in making those decisions and thinking those issues through, and very importantly, an explosion in the number of vendors with piecemeal solutions about how, what they regard, their best approach to doing things. However, that is going to have a significant burden that could have enormous implications for years. And so the question is, Will we see a degree of convergence in the approach to doing uh, software in the form of pipelines and applications and whatnot, driven by a combination of what the hardware is capable of doing, what the skills are, uh, are make, make possible, and very importantly, the natural attributes of the data. And we think that there will be. There will always be tension in the model if you try to invent new software, but one of the factors that's going to bring it all back to a degree of simplicity will be a combination of what the harbor can do, what people can do, and what the data can do. And so we believe pretty strongly that ultimately the issues surrounding data, whether it be latency or location, as well as the development, the development complexity and the administrative complexity are going to be a range of factors that are going to dictate ultimately of 
how some of these solutions start to converge and simplify within enterprises. As we look forward, our expectation is that we're going to see an enormous net new investment over the next few years in pipelines, because pipelines are a first level set of investments on how we're going to handle data within the enterprise. And they'll look like, in certain respects, how DBMSs look, used to look, but just in a disaggregated way. But conceptually and administratively, and then from a product selection and service selection standpoint, the expectation is that they themselves have to come together so the developers can have a consistent view of the data that's going to run inside the enterprise. I want to thank David Floyer. I want to thank George Gilbert. Once again, this has been Wikibon Action Item, and we look forward to seeing you on our next action item.